fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One Silver. Let's go, big fella. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had long been friends of Frank Norton, the marshal in Yuma, Arizona. When they learned that Norton had retired after many years of service, they rode to his small house beyond the edge of town. As the masked man and his Indian friend drew rein, they saw Frank Norton standing on the porch and called... Oh. Hello, Frank. Hey, hi there. Hey, Mary, come out here and say hello to a couple of friends. <laughs> Sakes alive, I'm sure glad to see you. <laughs> Frank, is it true that you've retired as marshal? Yep, it's true. Hello there. Hello, Mary. Oh, I'm so glad you two came. Dad was afraid we'd move without having a chance to tell you our new address. Oh, are you moving? Yes, we just rented this place. But now I've bought a place of our own. Dad is going to become a rancher. Well, <laughs> in a small way, of course. I bought the old Blackwell Ranch. Blackwell Ranch? Yes, it's on the Nogales Trail. Oh, I think I know the place. Oh, it's about 15 miles below El Centro Pass. Well, that's right. Kimosabe. Yes? We go that way in a few weeks. Are you? Yes, I have some business on the border. We'll probably pass very close to your new home. But then you've got to stop off and see the place. Yes, please do. <laughs> I'd like to... Hey, why don't you come inside? The house is upset. We're in the middle of packing, but there are chairs to sit on. Good idea, Mary. Come on inside. Oh, thanks. The Lone Ranger and Tonto visited for a short time with their friends, then shook hands with a promise to call on Norton and his daughter at their new home. A month later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, on their way to the border town of Nogales, stopped at a crossroads some distance north of their destination. The masked man said, Tonto, I'll leave you here and ride west to Fort Marshall. And you, you take message to Colonel Blair about Indians? Yes. You ride south and make camp below El Centro Pass. You mean Rock Bend, where we make camp before? Yes, that's right. I'll meet you there day after tomorrow. We'll visit our friend Frank Norton, then go on to Nogales. Ah, me meet you in camp. Adios, Toto. Come on, Silver. Adios. Get him up to town. (laughs) 
At dawn the next morning, Tonto passed through the sleeping town of Rockmont City and continued south through El Central Pass to the campsite. Easy, Scout, easy, fella. Six miles below the pass. Come on, let's travel, right? In Rockmont City, five hours after Tonto had passed through, outlaws Lyle Bozeman and Pug Frisbee robbed the bank and shot the clerk who tried to bar their escape. Easy, steady, boy. Come on, get him, get him, get him. They then sped southward, far in advance of the posse that pursued them. The posse lost the trail of the outlaws and divided into small groups, trying to relocate the escape route of the bandits. That night, deputies Jim Fleming and Bob McCann, after emerging from the southern end of El Centro Pass, saw a faint reddish glow among the trees atop a nearby hill. They ground hitched their horses, made their way to the summit, and there, from a hiding place in the shrubbery, saw the bank robbers standing by a campfire. McCann whispered, Jim, we found them. Yeah. Now crawl around to the other side of the clearing. In about five minutes, you make noises here. All right. When the crooks start in this direction to investigate, I'll move in behind them. Outlaws Lyle Bozeman and Pug Frisbee, confident that they had escaped pursuit, spent some time near their campfire. Bozeman was talking. Pug, we're less than 50 miles from the gullies now. The horses hold up, we should cross into Mexico the day after tomorrow. Hey, Lyle, did you hear that? Yeah. It came from over in those bushes. Get your gun out, Pug. Yeah. Let's see what that was. Come on. The bandits stopped for a moment when they reached the brush. And at that instant, Deputy Jim Fleming stepped from the bushes behind them. But as he moved, he tripped over a tree root and accidentally discharged the gun in his hand. The outlaws turned, guns blazing. Fleming, wounded, pitched forward on his face as Deputy McCann, who, hearing the gunfire, burst recklessly into the camp. Three guns screamed bullets and two men fell. Deputy Bob McCann and outlaw Pug Frisbee. The panic-stricken horses plunged into the underbrush and disappeared downhill into the darkness. Lyle Bozeman walked to where the two deputies lay, saw that they were alive, though unconscious, and then turned to Pug Frisbee, who, holding his left shoulder, staggered to his feet. Hey, look. Look at my shoulder. Let me see it. Uh, uh, it's bleeding a lot, but you're not hurt bad. It's just a flesh wound. Put a handkerchief against it. The bleed will stop. Yeah, yeah, all right. Hey, Lyle. Those two hombres are deputies from Rockmont, aren't they? Yeah, they must be part of a posse. Part? You mean you don't think those two are alone? Why should they be? They picked up our trail, the others must be with them. And they must be near. We gotta get away pronto. Hello, where are you going? I'm getting the haversack with the money in it. And I'm gonna take the badges off these lawmen's shirts. <laughs> yeah, they might come in handy. Oh, hello, that shooting scared the horses. They ran away. We'll never find them in the dark. We're not gonna try. We might run into the posse if we did. Come on, Lyle. We're hoofing it right now. Lyle, we've been walking all night. Most of the time, I think we've been walking in a circle. Yeah, maybe. But we know where we are now. Here's the trail again over to the left. Yeah. Yeah, the third time we found it after losing it. Lyle, I bet we're not more than five miles from where we started. So what? We're still free, aren't we? Yeah, sure. 
The thing is, we didn't leave the trail at all. Nobody's looking for us, nobody. It doesn't mean we're not being followed. Yeah, maybe. Now that it's getting daylight, we hey, ought to... Park, look. Where? Where I'm pointing. There's smoke rising from behind those rocks over there. You think it's a posse? I don't know, but we'll find out. There's a lot of trees over to the right of those rocks. Let's sneak behind them and try to see who has the fire going. Come on. Only one horse there. Yeah. With a horse that size, maybe we could... Hey, Lyle. Look. An engine. That's grub he's carrying to the fire. He's going to eat. Yeah, let's eat with him. Here, pin this deputy badge on your shirt. Huh? I'll put one on mine. You going to pose as lawman? Yeah. Engines respect lawmen. Come along, Pete. Pete? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I get it. All right, Bill, you lead the way. Tonto was preparing breakfast when he heard the bushes being parted and saw two men approaching. The taller of the two men wore a haversack slung across his shoulder, and on his shirt front was a silver badge. The second man also wore a badge, but his shirt was dark with bloodstains. Tonto, concerned, greeted them. Hi, Hi there. And then said, You hurt? You have trouble? Yeah, Injun. We had trouble. We're deputy sheriffs from Rockmont City, and last night we were ambushed by outlaws. They got me in the shoulder. And they shot the horses from under us. We've been walking all night. We're tired and hungry. Oh, come sit by fire. Me thick shoulder, then you eat. Oh. That's mighty decent of you, Injun. What's this about fixing my shoulder? Now, me get medicine. Bandage. <laughs> well, Pug, what do you think about that? He acts like a smart hombre. Want to knock him out now and take the horse? No. Wait till he fixes your arm. And wait till we eat. Toto cleaned and bandaged Pug Frisbee's shoulder wound, then prepared a hearty breakfast for the bogus lawman. When they'd finished eating, Lyle Bozeman rose to his feet and winked slowly at his partner. Pug Frisbee, seated on a tree stump, nodded his head and let his empty tin plate fall to the ground. He grabbed at his bandaged shoulder and began to moan as Tonto hurried to him. Oh, what happened? Oh, my shoulder's hurting more than it was. I, I think maybe... If, hey, look. Open my shirt. See if the bandage is too tight, huh? Uh, me do it. As Tonto bent over Easy, the man huh? and began to unbutton his shirt, hey. Lyle Bozeman moved oh. quietly behind the Indian. Hey. He had removed his gun from the holster and held it in his hand. Tonto, intent on helping the supposedly stricken lawman, didn't see Bozeman's arm raise in the air. But he heard the motion and turned too late. The outlaw's pistol crashed on Tonto's skull. Nice blow, Lyle. He's out cold. All right, Pug, get those ropes. We're going to tie and gag this race kid. Right. The outlaws, talking as they bound Tonto's ankles and wrists, were unaware that the Indians' eyelids flickered for a split second as they completed the job. They continued to talk, and Bozeman said... All right, Pug, you gag him. Sure. No sense taking chances, even with an engine. Here we are. Now let's get the horse and take off. Yeah. No, Lyle. Too bad we haven't another one. We'll get one at the first ranch we come to. There's enough money in this haversack of mine to buy a stable full of horses. You mean we'll buy a horse? Yeah, if we have to. The main thing for us right now is to get to Mexico. Come on, let's get that horse. Here, here, fella. Hold still, huh? Hey! Hold still, you crazy galoot. Hold still. He's like a bronc. Grab hold of him, Pug. Hold him down. Use your good arm and grab him. Scout resisted the efforts of the two men to hold him, but finally they succeeded in quieting the animal. Then they mounted double. Easy, steady, boy. Easy. Yeah, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Come on, get up. Hit him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue. Less than two hours after outlaws Lyle Bozeman and Pug Frisbee headed south, the Lone Ranger rode into camp. When he saw Tonto lying on the ground, bound and gagged, his eyes lit in angry surprise. He, said he, big fella. he leaped from his saddle and ran to his Indian companion. Tonto, what happened to you? Let me get that gag from your mouth. There. Oh, oh thanks, Kimisami. Thanks. Me glad you come now. Tell me what happened when I cut these ropes. As the Lone Ranger severed the ropes that bound Tonto's wrists and ankles, the Indian told of the attack by the two badge-wearing men and of their riding away together on his horse scout. Tonto ended saying, And me, me hear him say them buy horse, then go to Mexico. Me think them lie when them say them deputy sheriffs. They did lie, Tonto. Last night they shot two of Tom Warden's deputies and stole their badges. They're outlaws. Ah. Oh, me Fool, let him trick me. We never had contact with Bozeman and Frisbee Tonto. You wouldn't be expected to know them. Kimasabe, eh? how you know names of crooks? And how you know them shoot deputies, steal badges? Because I found those deputies a few hours ago, Tonto. Just after I came through El Centro Pass. They were lying in an open field near the base of the hill where the crooks shot them. Them dead? No, luckily one of them, Jim Fleming, regained consciousness before I arrived. He was able to give first aid to himself and his partner, Bob McCann. Ah, me remember them. They managed to get down from the hill, all right. They left their horses hobbled near the trail, and they tried to reach them. The effort was too much, and that's when they collapsed. Uh, Why outlaw shoot them? The Lone Ranger told of the holdup, chase, and gun duel, as related to him by the wounded deputies. Then concluded... And after I treated Fleming and McCann, I placed them on their horses and told them to ride here slowly. Ah, Them hurt cells, them try right fast. Exactly. I said you'd feed them and give them shelter when they arrived. And while they rested, you'd ride and get a doctor. Me not do that now, with Scout gone. Use one of their horses, Tonto, after they get here. Uh I'll ride on and try to catch those crooks. I have an idea I'll bring them and Scout back here before the day's over. Uh, Me hope so, Kimasabi. Two men on a horse can't make fast time, even on an animal as strong and speedy as Scout. I'll leave you now and start after those two. Tonto's horse scout showed almost human resentment toward the men who imposed such a heavy burden on his back as they rode him. His behavior was balky and his pace slow. More than four hours passed before outlaws Lyle Bozeman and Pug Frisbee came to the first house they'd seen since leaving Tonto. Ho, ho, ho now. They stopped near the small ranch-type dwelling, and Pug Frisbee slid from the back of the horse onto the ground. As he did, Scout suddenly snorted and kicked at the outlaw, missing him by inches. Hey, hey, Lyle, he tried to kick me. Oh, oh, hold still. Oh, hold still or out. Jump up, he'll kill you. Jump up. Let go! Oh, I told you he'd throw you. He's running away now, back the way we came. Look at him travel. As Scout headed for the trail, the door of the house opened, and a young girl emerged, hurrying toward the fallen Lyle Bozeman. Oh, my goodness. What happened? We heard the noise inside. Oh, you poor man, you've been hurt. It's... It's my back. You'll be all right, ma'am. Uh, Here, let me help you. Li- I mean, Bill. Get your hands off me. Oh, I, I just noticed your badges. You're lawman, aren't you? Uh, oh, yes, ma'am. I'm uh, Bill Smithers, and, and this is Pete Brown. We're deputy sheriffs from Rockmont City. Oh, are you? Daddy will certainly be surprised and glad to see you. Uh. Daddy? Daddy, come out here. What's all the noise, Mary? What are you yelling about? Hey, what the... Lyle, look who it is. Marshal Norton. Bozeman. Frisbee. Mary, what are these violins doing here? What? Get off my Don't property. Don't touch that you. gun, Marshal. Take his gun, Pug. Daddy, these men are deputy sheriffs from Rockmont. They're outlaws. That's what they are. Give me that gun, Marshal. Give me. Now, take it, you filthy rat. If I weren't afraid what might happen to Mary, I'd fight you before giving up like this. <laughs> How does it feel, Marshal? Having your gun taken from you for a change. They, they really are outlaws? The worst kind. Oh. I sent Bozeman to jail in Yuma. 
And as for this coyote frisbee, he's the rotten... Oh, shut up. Oh. Turn around, Marshal, and go into the house. You too, miss. we got to protect ourselves. The Lone Ranger, following the hoof prints left by a scout on the trail, had been riding hard since leaving Tonto. Presently, to his surprise, he saw a scout approaching. Hold it, hold it, easy. Scout, come here. Here, scout. That's it. Easy, boy. Steady now, easy. The Lone Ranger spoke soothingly to the horse, calmed him, and then turned him around on the trail. Scout, those crooks can't be far away. We're going to backtrack on your trail and see where you came from. All right, come on, Scout. Come on, Silver! Come on, Silver. Oh, easy, easy, Scout. Well, Scout, is that where they went? That's the old Blackwell house. That's where Frank Norton lives now. Hmm. I wonder if Frank may have seen those crooks and taken them. i better check into this and see what the situation is. Inside Norton's house, Lyle Bozeman held a gun on the retired lawman, while Pug Frisbee tied Mary's wrist hey, behind uh, her back. Uh, lady, I don't like doing this. Like Lyle said, we've got to protect ourselves. We've had enough trouble already. We're too near the border to let you or your old man Why stop. Why don't you stop yapping, Pug? Get finished there and tie up the marshal. You'll regret this day as long as you live. Marshal, it's too bad we had to run into you like this. I was it. Those are horses outside, Lyle. More than one. Well, Bozeman, what are you going to do now? I'll tell you, Norton. We're going to the next room, but we'll keep our guns on your daughter. You go to the door and send whoever's there away if you want this girl to live. Outside the house, the Lone Ranger, prepared for trouble, held a gun in his right hand as he knocked on the door with his left. When the door opened halfway, Frank Norton stood there, and his eyes opened wide as an involuntary gasp came from his lips. But he recovered quickly, and before the Lone Ranger could speak, the old man said, Fellas, stay on your horses and don't bother coming inside. The meeting's off. The Lone Ranger, grasping the situation, moved close to the ex-marshal and in a disguised voice said, You hear that, men? The meeting's off. Are Bozeman and Frisbee inside? Yes, they're holding guns on Mary. I'm uh, busy right now or I'd ask in. I'll get in touch with you later. When's the new meeting going to take place? Uh, tomorrow. Where are they? In the room on the far side where the window is. I'll ride down to your place later, Bert. You and Henry get the books in order and we can give... As Frank Norton continued to talk in a loud voice as if speaking to a group, the Lone Ranger moved away from the front door and hurried to the side of the house. Behind the curtain in the side room, Bozeman and Frisbee held their guns on Mary while Norton continued talking. Hey, Lyle, why doesn't that old windbag shut up? He's been rattling words for a couple of minutes now. Up your gun. Hey, 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 Lyle, behind Let's us. At the window, a masked man shoots. Get out my oh. wrist. He knocked the gun out of my hand. Now stand still. You got them. Good work. You tricked us, Norton. Frank, pick up their guns. Keep them covered. I'll come around through the front door. <laughs> The crooks were taken back to camp, and the loot was taken with them. The Lone Ranger and Frank Norton, leaving Mary at the ranch, waited in the camp until Tonto returned with a doctor, who treated the wounded deputies, Jim Fleming and Bob McCann, who had arrived there hours earlier. The doctor, when he finished with the men, said, These young fellas received wonderful first aid. I think they'll be well enough to ride horses and... In case they wish to leave here. We do want to leave, Doctor. We want to go to Rockmont City with those prisoners and the money they stole. Well, then do it. Marshal Norton will go with you to make sure everything remains under control. Right, Marshal? I'll be happy to. This is like old times, having you get me out of a fix. 
And it'll be like old times seeing those crooks put behind bars. <laughs> Look at Bozeman and Frisbee tied up over there, sitting against the rocks. <laughs> did you ever see a sawyer pair? <laughs> I never did. <laughs> yes. Scout ready now. Good. Gentlemen, this situation is well in hand now. We'll be going on to Nogales. You mean you're not coming with us? Oh, you don't need us, Jim. Come on, fellow. Easy, steady. Easy, steady. Easy, steady. Adios. Goodbye. Adios. Goodbye. 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 Up, scout. Gentlemen... I don't know many people in these parts. I'm just a doctor. And I'm not familiar with anyone who isn't a patient. But I heard and saw enough to realize that the masked man is someone remarkable. Now, who is he? Doctor, he's the one who captures outlaws for old lawmen and young lawmen and makes them look good. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendell, produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Steve McCarthy and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 